Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Menachem Foyer. I am the program director at the Delig IT, this is our data science uh, panel of alumni, on our data science and machine learning program. Um, we're going to begin now, and people will come in as the as the talk goes on. Um, I'd like to start off uh, by talking a little bit about data science and machine learning. Um, there'll be a lot more talk about this in the uh, in the open house, um, but I, I just want to just do a general general overview of it. And uh, yeah, and then we'll start the panel. Okay, so. So at Delig IT, we've been running this data science and machine learning program, and we're running it through another iteration right now. Just to give you a sense, the data science is the profession of preparing and modeling data for insight. There's so much data in the world today, and one of the great skills that people have is to be able to look into that data and to take that, take that data, work with it, and manage it, and develop it and categorize it in such a way that there's insights that can be developed for organizations and for businesses and institutions that can lead to maximizing growth and, and reducing waste and so much more. So machine learning deals with predictive models and predicting the future, understanding relationships between things, events, and people better, and evaluating conditions and assumptions that are made about about things with given the data that are made to test different hypotheses to understand um, what's going on and what insights can be driven from any situation. Another really important aspect of data science and machine learning is natural la la language processing, which deals with coding, uh, bringing coding into data science and using that to, to develop insights and to create models. And the really interesting thing about data science is that it is isn't directly uh, a part isn't directly artificial intelligence, but it's a subset of it, meaning that it's emulating human thought and teaching machines how to learn for themselves to teach to program to use data and to understand people's behaviors or things behaviors or events behaviors, and to be able to predict to get insights from that and understanding how the human brain works and how it derives insights. Another important thing to keep in mind, and again, all of these points I'm, I'm making will be explained by our expert teachers uh, in, uh, in the open house. I'm just going over things in general here, and I'm going to let the, the people, our stu my students in the data science machine learning course, will tell you a lot more about this stuff, having gone through the class in depth and, are, and applying it to the workplace. Other thing is salaries and benefits is that salaries can go anywhere from $60,000 to $170,000 in data science and machine learning and senior positions after people have been there for several years can go from 150,000 to $225,000. The benefits of, of data science are, is that um, you could use math and statistics and programming to solve real world problems that are out there. Let's say, you know, dealing with pollution, dealing with healthcare, dealing with like right now, it's like supply chain issues. How do we get vaccines to people? These are all, problems that could use data science solutions. And the other interesting thing is the data is apolitical and it's subject to interpretation and analysis. So it's not necessarily something that's already political. It's not already an ethical issue. It's something which is contingent on interpretation. And if you'd like to learn more about our course, meet our teachers and ask questions, I suggest you come to our open house, which is gonna be on Monday at 8 p.m. We're having a webinar with our teachers. And one of the people in this panel is gonna be a TA there. He'll be there as well to, answer, to uh, answer questions and talk about the program. And we also have a special guest who's, a, who's an expert in data science and machine learning who will also be talking about data science and machine learning at the open house on February 8th. So without further ado, I want to uh, introduce our panelists tonight. So, Sorry about that. So um, our panelists tonight are Mattis, Ste Mattis Steben, who is with the COR. Hi, Mattis, say hi. Hi, how you all doing out there? Well, Mattis took our class and he's gonna be the first speaker tonight. And then we have Chaim Glantz. Uh, Chaim Glantz uh, is working for Data Navi. He'll be talking soon. And we also have the final speaker tonight will be Bilal Majid, 
who was at uh, CompuGen when he was taking our course and is, is using data science now in what he, his endeavors. Uh, hi. hi, Bill. Say hi. <laughs> okay. And uh, so without further ado, I'd like to start off and introduce uh, Mata Steven. Mata Steven took our course um, and one of the, the, the sponsors for this course was the, the, the Kashris Council of Canada, the COR, the COR uh, helped sponsor his course. And he does work with them in, in uh, using data science in Kashris. And he'll tell you all about himself and I'm gonna let him uh, take the, the podium. Sure, great. Thank you so much, Menachem. So let me my share the screen here. Let's get going here. Hopefully you all could see that. So yes, I took their course in 2020. And if you'd like to see more about what I do with COR, there is a video online. Google COR Senior Mishkiach at Adel Gaiti. Let's get into my background a little bit and I'll tell you more about the course. So yeah, I did grow up in California, currently living in Toronto. Uh, I wish I was in California right now, nice and warm. <laughs> When I went to university, I was interested in environment and the environment and farming and things like that. Um, and in the middle of my uh, studies, I ran into a Chabad Shliach who sent me off to Yeshiva. And actually, I met Menachem in Yeshiva 20 plus years ago in Eretz Yisrael in Kfar Chabad. Um, and I've done a lot of different entrepreneurial work. However, I was um, given a nice opportunity to go into Kashris where I'm now considered what's called a senior mishkiach. I'm in charge of all of the caterers and all of the um, events within the city of Toronto. And I oversee, you know, in the slower times, and right now it's COVID, so there's not much going on, but in the slower times, I oversee close to 35 mishkicham. And in the busier times, it's between 50 to 70 mishkicham a week, depending on the events going on. Um, there's a lot of data I collect, a lot of data out there I collect, uh, uh, caterers data, data on um, events, data on um, Bedikas Talayim, meaning checking uh, vegetables for infestation, meat consumption in the city. So I'm now collecting that. I'm using that to better understand kashras, and we can talk about that more later. Um, when I got into Adelic, I had actually no data, or excuse me, no tech background. Didn't know anything about data science, and I went into it with really just an open mind. Um, you know, the, the course was, as it says here, nine hours a week, um, and I was working full time, and my work week, week is not a 40 hour week, it's more of a 50, 55 plus hour week. And still with that, I, was ma I managed to do the course three times a week, three hours per course. So what are you gonna expect when you take the course? Um, for me, since I was a beginner, it was very rigorous, very tough. Um, you know, I had to do a lot of studying on SQL, Power BI, and Python. These are all new concepts to me. So besides the course work, um, a lot of homework I did on the off days and a lot of Googling as well, um, but it was very well worth it. So currently, um, as I said, I'm, I work with the COR and I use these skill sets uh, to make dashboards. I'm tracking now all the infestation in the city and at any given time, I could tell you, say a brand name, I'll tell you the infestation levels, I'll tell you what bugs are being found. Uh, give me, I could tell you which region things are grown in, if it's Salinas Valley, if it's in Mexico, if it's in Texas, I could tell you the infestation levels there, according to the different species of vegetables. If romaine lettuce has more than green onions, uh, cabbage, green, red, whatever it is, I'm collecting all this data and I'm analyzing it. So it's very exciting uh, when it comes to kashras. Um, right. That's about it for me right now. Um, because of Delg IT, I'm having tremendous success, just so you know. I um, added this new layer and insights into Kashris. And um, I'm, only, I'm already speaking to the OU and OK and Star K. They're all excited. We're all doing collaborations together. And uh, it just brings a nuance to Kashris that no one has done before. So uh, we're raising the bar when it comes to uh, excellence in Kashras. You Thank go. you, Matis. And we'll come back to you in the end after the, the Q&A we'll, we'll, people will ask questions. Thank you so much for your beautiful presentation. Okay, and now we're gonna have uh, Chaim Glantz um, speak. Chaim, you there? Yeah, hi. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about Chaim. Chaim, uh, 
Chaim has been taking course with the Delegate IT for a while. We, we uh, started you off with a Cisco course, and then uh, Chaim did Python, an in-depth Python course, and then did data science and machine learning. And uh, we're very proud of him. He's one of the best students in our classes. He's a brilliant guy. I don't want to flatter you. I know you're a very humble guy. But uh, Chaim will uh, tell you all about the work he's doing. He's working for a company called Data Navi right now and applying his uh, data science and machine learning skills there. But uh, without further ado, go ahead, Chaim. You can, I guess, share your screen and your presentation. You see my screen? Yep. Yeah. So my name is Chaim Yosef Glantz. And um, one second, I have um, one sec, sorry. You see my screen still? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it works, okay. So I grew up in Muncie, New York, and I married a girl from Toronto, so that's why I came to Toronto. And I've been studying Bob Cuddle the 17 years. And then, um, and then I, I, I didn't have any background in computers while I, I was learning in Cuddle. Um, so even though I started the course, I didn't, I started from scratch. Um, I, I did enjoy math all my whole life. I, I always had a, I liked math. So, but but for the course, I think um, you don't need to know math because you could do it without math too. And my Rosh Kodal suggested that I should take a course because the family is growing and the Kodal support wasn't enough. So I took courses with, uh, with a dollar. So when you take a course, it's 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 not easy to take a course. You need to give away a lot of time, and you're not so much at home. It's like it's like a, a year or two that um, you're not available to go to any any sim course or not. But it's worth it. And I I give, gave away my the nights that there's uh, I think the course is usually going three nights a, a week. That's nine hours. So the other six nights I gave away for reviewing the course. And uh, I think that's, that was my success. My Rashkodal told me that uh, the same like you have, <clears throat> you have to have a smart event. When you learn, you have to learn like in one shot, not to stop in the middle. When you work, you should do the same thing. While you're working, don't stop, just I got the best computer, that that uh, $900 computer, and I think it was worth it. And there was other guys in the course that uh, they had like slow computers, and they, it wasn't as easy as as for me. And I took three courses with 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 IT, with Adalek IT. Thank you, Menachem. Well, we learned the uh, first one was IT. I don't use it now, but but. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of knowledge, and and it's it's uh, it was good. To, it's good to know. And I took the Python course, and this is actually what I'm using the whole day with Python. I'm using the data, I'm working with the data with Python. And then I did the data science course, uh, the same like this one that's coming up. And I use it now to predict sales, and I predicted COVID. I made a nice um, prediction for COVID. Um, the waves that the second wave and yeah there's 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 a few types there's a few ways to to work with the data you can work with excel that's that's for um, plain people then there's tableau and power bi for more better better things and python is, is much more but you could do much more with the, with the data And and the, the reason why the course is very good because um, first um, um, 
what I'm doing now is I'm I'm still learning more and more stuff details um, till the computer should be able to give results by its own. Because now in, the, in in this world, we want the computer to work for us. We are a little bit lazy, whatever we. we so that's that's a big demand today. People want to want to be. They will have time to learn, so they have to want the computers to work for them. So that's uh, data science is very good for that to help out help out the people. And thank you, Menachem, for for all these courses and for everything that you did for me. And uh, um, the, the, there are people that say uh, um, uh, Menachem is finding jobs. Is it is it that he finds jobs? The answer is, if, if you work with Menachem, then you have a job. He, he is helping you find a job, but if you don't answer him, then he can't beg you. It works both ways. I'm begging Menachem, Menachem is begging me, and it uh, works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Menachem. My, my daughter made this nice slides. Uh, so thanks for my daughter. Thanks for my wife. She gave her a lot, a lot of time. Um, while I took the course, and now Hashem, once I started working, it's it's like a different, all different. I have time for the kids and everything. Because why do I take a course? You have to make money from your old job and and take a course for the new job. It's a big transition. But afterwards, is very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chaim. Those good words. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. Okay, now. Uh... And Bilal is our final presenter of tonight's uh, data science alumni panel. And uh, Bilal's got a new computer. His, his, uh, his uh, screen isn't working, so you can't see his face, but uh, you can see his V. Yep. <laughs> hey, Bilal. Hey, um, I'll share my screen. Just let me know that uh, when you can see. Sure. Can you see the presentation? Yep. Thank you, Bilal. Perfect. Uh, okay. So, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Bilal Majid, and uh, I've I've basically gone through a different route compared to the two other other panelists. I'm I just I graduated from uh, my undergrad two years ago, almost three years ago now. I was a mathematics undergrad from Waterloo, and uh, I also did a minor in computer sciences. So when I was trying to understand which path I want to take. Um, just researching what industries there are, what, what professions are available. Data science really appealed to me because I could combine both math and uh, computer science coding into into one bucket and use it. Um, and as I explored it more, it, it got more and more interesting. So currently I'm working as a, as a business analyst or IT business analyst uh, for CompuGen. And my main work is just uh, Power BI projects. So basically creating dashboards, manipulating data using SQL. And some of these skills I learned in my undergrad and then uh, some of them I also learned at Adelaide and I'll get into that in a little bit. So how, how my journey started was when I joined CompuGen, I was uh, pushed to do a certification in data, scientist for, uh, data science from Microsoft. Uh, it, was a, it was a good introduction. It taught me a little bit of Power BI, a little bit of Python, uh, but it, it wasn't enough. So uh, when the Adelaide uh, opportunity came up, I, I I jumped to that. Uh, it was uh, amazing lectures. Uh, we had two really good profs at that time. Um, uh, one prof taught the first uh, three months, which uh, was more just visualization and uh, using SQL. And then the other prof taught the, the data science and machine learning part. Um, so yeah, and uh, I researched a lot and learned a lot of requirements on how to be successful and Adelaide's course provided most of those skills. So um, yeah, what, what are you gonna learn if uh, you take the Adelaide program? Uh, two main areas, like I mentioned, are the focus of uh, this program are data visualization. So you, you'll start off with Excel, do a little bit of uh, Power BI, a lot of Tableau, which was the uh, structure last, term, uh, last year. Um, and then you'll learn Power Query um, and SQL. Um, the two tools that I've used almost every day since I did the Adelaide program was Power Query and SQL. Uh, Power BI is just the visualization tool, but what you do in Power Query, how you manipulate the data and create, give, basically provide insights using that data is done in Power Query and SQL. 
so those two were very important skills to grab from there. And then machine learning um, included uh, Python um, and then stat statistics and machine learning. And in machine learning, you obviously used Python. So basically the last month of the program really helps you bring in the, the stuff you learned in the first five months, six months, and combines it in, in that machine learning portion. Um, now the path to success when you take this program, you have to follow the lectures three hours at night is, uh, is difficult, but if you listen to the lectures, you can get through it and you have to complete the exercises or the notebooks or anything that you go through in, in class, like Kaim did, uh, was mentioning, you have to put your hours in, um, the more hours you put in, the better you'll get. And you have to, you get to apply your concepts to a personal project. Um, and that's, that's actually the fundamentally the most important thing here where you're doing a project using all the skills you learned. Um, and you can, you can go whichever way you like, you pick a data set and then you can, uh, apply all the skills you learned and then you get to present to a, to a group of people that are very, uh, knowledgeable in this area. Uh, that was, that was an amazing experience. Um, and if, if you follow the lectures and go through everything for your time and you'll be, you'll be very successful. So for me, the current use, like I mentioned was Power BI, Power Query and SQL. Um, and also I, I do Python and uh, machine learning um, just as my, uh, as my project, my personal project. So I've got a GitHub where I store all my projects that I've worked on. I've done about seven of my personal projects so far. I just like to explore the field. It's very interesting. Um, and yeah, using the Python and stats, some of the skills I learned, I applied right away to my personal project. So it was, it was great. Um, and then in the, for the future, I'm, I'm doing a master's in data science from Ryerson. Um, it's a master of science. So it's a lot of um, math and stats and also coding. Um, and my goal is to work as a data scientist. And that's it. Thank you, Bilal. Okay, so right now, um, so the people who are the participants can ask questions. And if you look at the, if you look at the, the Zoom window in front of you, um, on your side, it says Q and A, and in that section, um, you answer your questions. You saw you can ask your questions there, and then we will answer your questions. But this is like your way of communicating. It's like a mediating between us and you, is through this uh, this Q and A panel. So if anyone has any questions, I see on the other side there's some people. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, if you could type them in your computer to uh, to Q and A, then we can answer those. Or I could also call on you. Uh, Raimi, how are you? Puyan? Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? I know you have a strong interest. Do you have any questions for any of the panelists? Sure, actually, I have a quick question for Bilal actually. Sure. Which actually was very interesting. Thank you very much uh, for all the three speakers, especially hi to Chaim, who I know him from Bobo hi. from a long time ago. <laughs> um, it's great to see you here. Uh, Bilal, sorry, I have a quick question for you um, yep. regarding the plans that you said. You said you currently have a full time job and you're planning to study for masters in data science at the same time, right? Correct. Yep. So how does it work? Because the master's should be full-time and have a job. Is it like your job is project-based? Like uh, how, how does it work? Because this is a plan I'm like, I'm thinking about it to have it in the future. Yep, so, so, so I'm, uh, I'm doing a master's full-time and uh, working full-time as well. It's, it's not recommended. Uh, it's usually recommended to, if you're working full-time, you have to do master's part-time, but options are available at, at every university. So. Um, basically the, the reason they don't allow, they don't say you should be doing full-time both, um, studies and, um, f uh, working is because they can't make exceptions for you if you have obligations for work. Um, like for example, if you've got a meeting with the CEO on the same day as the exam, they won't give you a, an exception. Um, and if you work full-time, you also can't get scholarships from universities. So you have to think of that. Um, I... I put money aside so I could do that master's. Um, that's that's a big co uh, consideration. And um, yeah, just it, it's difficult because uh, lectures are right after work. So it's very similar to how you're gonna 
do it with Adelaide. So I just kind of went into the same stride. I said, if I can do the Adelaide program three times a week, then I can do master's lectures three times a week. Right. Um, the other question I have is that, um, like, uh, for uh, somebody, is, I, I, I understand from your resume that you have a bachelor's in mathematics. Um, somebody who wants to continue in data science as a master's or for PhD, he, if he's not from the engineering background or even math background, is it possible for them to, to continue in the data science for the graduate degree or not? Yeah, it, it is a possibility. Um, if you, if I don't remember the requirements exactly for the Ryerson master's, but it doesn't say you need to be an undergrad in mathematics. Um, you need to have a set of specific skills and they ask for a letter. So in that letter, you have to describe your understanding of Python and R, uh, your understanding of uh, basic stats, uh, your understanding of, uh, I don't, they don't even ask about math, to be honest, uh, in right. the application, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Remy. Thank you, Malachem. Um, and I know I'll ask. I'll also ask uh, Randy to talk. Randy, we had talked before. Yet. Randy, do you have any questions? Randy, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Okay, right, well, thank you, Menachem, for uh, arranging this and putting this together tonight. And of course, thank you to uh, all the panelists as well for sharing your experience, uh, your insights, as well as you know how to go through the course and as well how it how it works afterwards. You're welcome. Welcome. Um, do you have any um, questions? Sorry. Yeah. So I, I guess the question would be like, in terms of I guess in terms of math and statistics versus computer skills, computer skills, like actually learning the skills in the programs, um, like which part do you find like more helpful in pursuing data science and understanding it and being able to do the analyses and produce results? Anybody? Matis, Chaim, Bilal? I think none of them. Uh you don't have any, you don't need to have any background i think if i understand okay. this question so it's more it's more just knowing how to it's more just learning the science like learning how to use the like learning the skills of, of data science and like, the programming like statistics like like, like the statistical background like what do you think about that like uh like i put that to uh to Bilal or 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 Matis or any of these guys like with the stats is it like, how do you feel that was brought into the course? Yeah, so the, so the stats was, uh, was done well, in my opinion. It was, a, it was a little heavy that you would have to put your time in um, after the classes because um, Abbas, who's going to be the prof, w was trying to explain stats from, from scratch in one month, which is very difficult. But um, he was able to provide the basics, how to do basic concepts, how to complete basic concepts like mean, median, mode, um, and then going to the deeper stats that are required for um, data science. Now, obviously in, in one month, you can't go through everything, but he gives you a good uh, basis to continue your education and continue learning online. Um, that when you read an article on, for example, medium.com, you won't get confused. Perfect, thank you. Good. But, okay, um, you have any other questions, Randy? Or uh, no, I think that's good. Thank you. Yeah, sure. It looks like I didn't understand the question. Okay. Oh, okay. No worries. No worries. Um, and and um, and Randy, if you have any questions also about like what they do with their work and how they use data, data, you could ask how they use statistics. You know, like what the what's the place of data in their work? You're welcome to ask that question if you want. I mean, like what is the place of data in your work? Each one of you, like where do you go about data? Like how does how does data work in like the, the stuff that you do like Matis and the work that you do? Like what's the primary data that you're working with? What kind of statistics you're dealing with? What stats you see? Right now we're just uh, like I'm primarily focusing on tracking things and turning that data into different visuals to better understand it. Uh, tracking you know meat consumption in the city 
And like I said before, I'm doing a lot of work with just infestation and we're, uh, that's really what it is. So it's really just taking the data. Right now I'm focusing more on the Power BI aspect of it. Um, not yet into Python, soon I will be applying Python to the analytics. Um, but it's more just visuals to better understand what is going on. Because so, visuals is always a better way to understand data. Excellent. And, and Chaim, you say you're using more Python these days than the data? Yeah, I'm using um, Python, yeah. A lot so I'm, more taking, I'm taking CSV or Excel files, let's say COVID numbers or, or sales, and I'm making nice graphs and see how we can predict the future. Gotcha. And Bilal, in the work that you do at uh, CompuGen, what kind of like... Are you leveraging more uh, your your Python, your data, like in the Power BI? What what falls? What's um... yeah? So um, right now I'm I'm more doing uh, Power uh, Power Query and Power BI and uh, SQL. Um, that's that's sort of my main role right now. The Python I use on my own time, and obviously I, I completed my first semester of masters um, from September to December, so that was fully based on Python. They've completely gotten rid of R. Uh, which is another language for doing stats and machine learning. They've completely gotten rid, rid of that from the program. Wow. So that's interesting it, at, at uh, Ryerson. Interesting. Cause yeah, I know, I, cause I know it, uh, I know at York university, I know a guy who just will argue to the deaf for R, but uh, uh, yeah. Interesting yeah. yeah. If you're doing more uh, empirical analysis and stats, then an R, R is uh, preferred, but when you get into machine learning, it's, what you can do in two lines of code in Python, you would need to write about 20 lines in R. So for machine learning, it's it's a lot better. And the exposure was there in, in the Adelic program. So you can understand how all of that works. Excellent. All right, I see uh, Brian. Uh, hi, Brian. Do you have any questions or comments to any of the panelists? No, I, I just stopped in to support you guys. I've been actually working in the field for a few years. Like I got a little obsessed after I saw you last, but Awesome mm -hmm. stuff, guys. Excellent. Okay, so I want to I want to thank everybody uh, for coming tonight uh, for our panel. And just to, to note, I just want to uh, share my screen real quick here, so you can see here that we're having our open house. Sorry about that. Our open house is going to be on February eighth. So um, if you can, if you'd like to come in and learn more about the course, you'll get to meet our teachers. Um, we have a special guest who, in the in the data science field, will be talking about data um, with everybody, and we also will have a Q and A period after. So you'll learn all about the course, about the course outline, the requirements, um, and also the in and uh, the types of projects that you're going to be doing from the teachers themselves. Um, so please join us. Um, that's all on uh, on Eventbrite. Um, if you'd like the invite, I think I've sent out to everybody, I could send out to everybody in this group since you're all um, tracked on the list and I'll also send recordings to the people who couldn't come tonight. Um, so thank you for coming this evening. Um, and thank you panelists for your, for your time this evening. And uh, I'm very proud of all of you guys that you've gone through the program and the work that you're doing. Uh, it, it's, this is what it's all about. And it's the, the, the applying data science or full stack development, or all of our courses, all the stuff that we do in the workplace is the ultimate goal is to get people in the workplace and to get them using these skills and, and, and uh, to, to develop their own position and to, do, and to contribute to the companies that, and the organizations that they're working for. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good evening.